enough when the best is available. With this enthusiasm, David Lobo, founder and chairman of the DJ Group, started a mission to provide quality, high-yielding seedlings of the coconut and empowered farmers. So let's welcome the pioneer of the coconut breeding and ceremony awards winner, Mr. Lobo, to our very own show, Science Talk Show, presented by Times of Biotech. Hello, sir. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Sir, can you please share your journey uh, of this co- as a coconut breeder? Because uh, you had a very long journey right from 1980s till date. You are still working for this. So can you share your journey? I would be happy to. Uh, 1981 or 82, I met a professor, Anthony Davis. He was a UN expert who had done a lot of research in coconut breeding. And he convinced me to start. So we started in Madurai on a land. He wanted a minimum of 200 acres. So we got that. We started in Madurai. And uh, under his guidance, we planted the special dwarf variety, a yellow dwarf variety, which he had worked with, and the special tall varieties uh, for which, uh, which we needed because we were going to produce a hybrid. Uh, what th- does that mean? Um, we have two varieties of coconuts, the dwarf and the tall. Crossing the two gives you a hybrid. And his work has shown huge incremental benefits in the hybrid, which he wanted us to duplicate. And that's what we did. So we started that, but the journey wasn't so easy. Uh, rain deficiencies, seven years of very poor rainfall in Madurai gave us a lot of problems. Um, uh, long gestation period. Uh, We thought it would be 10 years before this project would take off and be profitable. It took us 22 years to make our first profit. But having said that, the benefits are great. So we are very happy for having gone into this project. Of course, Sarah, you are true. Actually, making the kalpa vriksha, the coconut tree, it is called kalpa vriksha because each part of it is being utilized and you are making it more profitable for the farmers. Sir, in this journey, you must have faced some difficulties. So, what were those difficulties you faced? Well, in the growing period, as I mentioned, in the first 10, 12, 15 years, <clears throat> which became 22 years. It was a financial challenge and also, as I said, the long gestation period. But there was a new difficulty which we had not foreseen. The name and image of a coconut hybrid was very bad because every year before the rains, people would go around selling hybrids, uh, selling them for a huge price of 400 and 500 and then disappear and they'd never come back. And only five, six, seven years later, that housewife or that farmer would find out he has been taken for a ride. So hybrid coconuts were synonymous with poor performance and we had to break that. So we had to give seedlings out free to uh, the opinion makers in villages, to special farmers, try it out, see it out and until We had plants flowering and yielding and farmers seeing the value of them and seeing their high productivity. Till then, it was a challenge. I have not given you a comparison, but maybe I could say that later of why our trees are so much better than any other tree, coconut tree. Okay, so, so you said that you are working on the coconut tree, you are selecting and uh, even you are uh, doing a breeding. So can you please give some glimpse of the breeding uh, uh, parameters and how you actually, actually this breeding process work in coconut? Uh, yes, very good question, a little technical, but I'll try and make it as easy as possible. As I said, we cross a dwarf palm with a tall palm. Uh, The dwarf palm is grown in large numbers. We have 30,000 of them in our farms. Mm -hmm. Uh, When the flower comes out, we call that a spade. Uh, It comes from the leaf, uh, from the leaf stem, from the trunk of the tree, but but from the leaf. And uh, 
we open it in advance before the pollen ripens and matures and uh, we emasculate it, remove every male flower, there are 10,000 male flowers. And then, uh, then we pollinate every female button which is on it, which become into coconuts, right? Last year, we pollinated a little over 4 million buttons by hand. And we, um, we then look after the palm in the best way possible, harvest them after 12 months, put them into a nursery, and the new plants which come out uh, are the hybrids. However, we do something extra which nobody else does. Anthony Davis pointed out to us to use a yellow dwarf because yellow is recessive and a green tall, he gave us the two varieties, told us about them. Green is dominant. So when you have a yellow nut producing a green sprout, we know it is a hybrid. Hmm? Whereas if a yellow sprout came out, it's not a hybrid, it's a dwarf again. And we are the only people, I think in India, uh, maybe others can also do this, uh, to give a genuine hybrid because a farmer cannot tell. Looking at two little seedlings, green seedlings, which is hybrid, which is not, we can. And we, therefore, to prevent adulteration, have a hologram sticker which we put onto every seedling we sell. And we tell farmers if there's no hologram sticker on it, please do not accept it. So that's in short what we do. Sir, you are doing the excellent work of plant breeding. But sir, can you tell us the, how this plant breeding and how these things have been changed day by day, specifically with, the, uh, with this huge technology difference? So what are the technology which you are being used, you are using in your uh, procedures, which was not available 20 years back? Actually, we are using technology and procedures of 20 years ago, we are not doing any genetic modification, but we are doing selective breeding, right? So I'll explain that for, uh, for people to understand better. I've already mentioned, we open the spade, remove the male flowers, bring in pollen by hand uh, from the tall palms and pollinate the dwarf buttons. And we get a hybrid nut. Out of that, 15 to 20 percent are rejected because bees and flies and insects and ants come and bring the wrong pollen and manage to, uh, to damage the hybrid we have. So we select these farms and only hybrids we deliver to farmers. And I mentioned because of the color coding, we are able to do that. Okay, sir. Next thing I want to ask, you are doing a great job of the breeding, but how your breeding varieties, though specifically the hybrids, are adding to the profit, uh, profit and the income of the farmers, how it is being, how it is changing the life of the small or the large farmers, and what kind of assistance do you give if they are accepting your uh, DJ varieties? Yes, very important. What we actually do is we are uh, making the plant much more productive by changing the architecture of the plant. By our selections, we are changing uh, the, the next generation to have the characteristics we want. For example, the normal coconut tree has 12 branches a year. Our hybrid has 18 branches a year. In fact, some are having 20 and 22 branches a year. I'm working towards producing 24 branches a year. Uh, each branch gives you a bunch of coconuts. So we hope the farmer will get even more bunches. Uh, like that, in our selection process, we have every, the details of every mother palm in our farm mm -hmm. computerized. We are the only people that have 30,000 palms with all their production details in our computer. So the computer selects those which are the highest yielders. We take three or 4%. And then out of those three or 4%, uh, 
we then apply a few other parameters, which are the number of leaflets, more leaflets, the better, the broader the leaflet, the better, uh, the shorter the tree, the better. And like this, there are many other characteristics which we select from eight altogether to produce the next generation. So okay. the tree we supply to farmers is actually having three times more uh, leaf area. That means photosynthesis is okay. three times more with our tree. And therefore we can see that the production is more than three times. The sap or nira, which we call, is also more than three times. And therefore the farmer is getting more than three times uh, yields. A normal farmer would get with good management, 80 nuts per tree. Our tree with the same type of good management will give 250 nuts. The normal tree genetically has a copra content of about 125 to 140 grams. Ours is 200 grams. The normal tree will give you tender coconut of 250 ml of water. Ours is 500 ml of water. And therefore you can see on every front, the tree is giving so much more because of the genetics, which selections, which genetics we have done has produced a new type of farm. We've been doing this from 1982, and therefore you can see that it takes a long time to make changes. Of course, sir. Good things does not come so fast. Good things does take time. True. So, of course. True. Obviously. So, uh, what, what will be your message to the young generation and farmers? Well, to the farmers, I would say focus, coconuts can become uh, your... Um, uh, it can become a new paradigm shift for agriculture. They can do any cultivation under the coconut tree. They can improve their economics dramatically. Uh, we are happy to give more details to those who are really interested if they contact us. Yes, to the younger generation who are not necessarily exposed to agriculture, I would uh, tell them, look at agriculture as a very viable option. Uh, I see... Uh, Coconuts becoming, uh, creating a paradigm shift, not just in agriculture, but even in regard to options which people have. Um, lot of opportunity, lot of uh, possibilities. The new coconut palm produces five times more sugar, which is much more valuable than sugar cane does per acre. The new coconut palm can replace all the dairy products, and don't forget, uh, dairy is the second highest producer of global warming gases in the world. And the coconut tree takes out of the atmosphere 58 tons of carbon dioxide per year per hectare. So there are so many advantages. And for the young person coming in, I would like to add one more sentence. And that is, they can help eradicate poverty. The farmer can, and the new person coming in, using in the internet of things, using new technologies, they can make uh, dramatic improvements in agriculture. The genetics has been done. We are going to continuously improve the genetics. We need people to come in who will continuously improve management and technology and the internet of things and bring them in. I wish them all the best and I would give any help I can if anybody contacts us. So basically planting a coconut tea, you are getting a health and wealth together. Yes, I agree. Yes, there is one phrase you said right at the start, which I did not expand. I would like to expand here. And that is uh, good is not good when the best is available. Yeah. For any other form of agriculture, you can plant, try, remove, replant, retry, but not with the coconut tree. With the coconut tree, you're planting once in your lifetime. You must plant the best because there's such a big difference of income generation per annum that over 50 or 60 years, that loss is just 
not worth incurring look spend time look out for what is the best and then plant that tree okay that's nice okay sir thank you so much for giving your time it was lovely meeting you and in fact i got a lot of uh, in informative information so thank you sir for accepting my invitation and being on show and also uh, most importantly inspiring us with your life experiences and as a coconut breeder thank you so much sir thank you and thank you for giving me the opportunity to share the message of the coconut tree yes sir thank you so much